So welcome back. Happy New Year to everybody. I want to thank everybody that subscribed. It, it's sort of overwhelming really when I wake up in the morning and see the amount of new subscribers that I have. And in the short time I've owned this Range Rover, I've had over 130 new subscribers in less than two months, which is just mind blowing. Anyway, I hope you enjoy all the content that's being produced. Love to hear comments, feedback, suggestions, all that good stuff. It only helps me produce better content and produce better content that you guys want to watch and subscribe to. So moving forward this year, a couple of things in the next couple of weeks. This is off this week to get the Navi Plus system installed. I'm off to Cambridge to get that done. And I hope they'll allow me to put a GoPro up and then put it on time lamp so you can actually see all of this dash being taken apart and the new unit going in. I don't know whether they're gonna show it on the bench, but I'll talk to them about it. I think they'll be pre pretty receptive to doing that. So that will be able to show you all of this taken apart and then I'll walk through what the Navi Plus system looks like. In essence, this is gonna allow me to have Apple CarPlay installed on this unit without pulling this out. So I do like some of the functionality on there, especially the 4x4 display sound system is great, especially for my needs, don't need any of that modifying. So I want to try and leave this as factory as I possibly can. And that's really part of the whole build, is to try and leave this without any additional holes, without any additional cutting work of the bodywork to be able to get it the way I want it, but to take everything off and put it back to as it was factory. And again, that's part of what this build is all about, is not destroying this beautiful interior, not destroying any of the outside panels, not drilling any holes in. And part of the frame build in the back was to make sure that I could put it in and three Anderson plugs later, the whole thing can come out. So that's part of the whole ethos of building this out. I guess it's back to Land Rover's tread lightly uh, motto way back in the 70s, 80s and 90s and I'm going to tread lightly on this build. So as has been mentioned before this is a gorgeous vehicle inside and it's going to stay that way. A few things that I've done is my GoPro is mounted on a 67 Designs 300 millimeter rail and if you can see on this camera this is now pointing loosely at where my gear is going to go. In the Defender I have one of those, but when I installed it on the Defender I had the ability to get a 90 degree drill and then put the rib nuts into the dash panel. I can't do this on this vehicle because the rake of the, of the windscreen is way too steep to get a 90 degree drill bit in, so it's impossible to do. So as usual, getting creative, that rail, which is a 300 millimeter rail, is actually glued in using Aerodite Extreme. So there are in the UK we have this glue called Aerodite, which is incredibly strong. It's far more stronger than putting something like um, super glue on it. And super glue, I believe, actually burns the, the plastic and bonds it together. And I've got some residue. You see this white residue if you use super glue on plastic. Well, that's the bonding. It's actually trying to break down the material. What I've done here is and you can see it from this camera, and I'll show some other videos of it, is I have araldited small pea-sized pieces of araldite on the feet on this rail. So sitting here, I can only see my 67 Designs arms of all the gadgetry on the front of here. I cannot see the rail. And even if somebody's sitting in the passenger seat, you can't see the rail. Now it will come out, you know, what it leaves underneath where that vent is for the windscreen, I'm not sure, but you won't be able to see it. You can't see it from here. And the chances of it coming out anyway, me selling this vehicle in the next four or five years, nil. So I really like the way it is. It's on, it's really strong. It's been bonded over a couple of days. Um, I put one of my socket set panels um, on the top of it to sort of glue it in place. It's not moving. And I've now got, so left to right, I have my Garmin. I have a... I have to be careful if I say this because it's all on voice commands. I have a GOPRO mount from a 67 design. So that is what you're looking at. I'm looking at that now with an external mic. I also have a 67 designs iPhone mount. And then I have another mount on the end, which is just for a forward facing 
G-O-P-R-O -O mount where I can put a camera that points out the front of the vehicle. So that's in place. And like I said, I've got potentially four devices. I've tested it. They're fine. Some of them actually rest on the top of the dash. So my Garmin inReach rests on the top of the dash, but it looks really good. It does look a bit complicated when you're sitting here looking back out of it. But quite honestly, most of that stuff is really simple to unscrew the knurled nuts on the arms and all of that stuff comes off. So I really, really like the way that that mount has come. It's the only place I can put it. Unfortunately, the bolts that hold the leather dash top in place are too far apart for the third, for the 300 millimeter rail to fit into those existing factory holes. So I had to get creative. But like I say, you can see it from this GoPro. Oops, just said it. You can see it from up here, looking down of the way it looks. Now, I also have, and I think you can see this, I also have a 67 Designs iPad mini mount, and that is installed on this small 100 mil rail on the side trim. Now, I did put a video about how I put all that in place. The side black panel, uh, sorry, black piano trim was scuffed on the passenger side. There's a big chip out of it. So what I've done is I've just screwed into the wood, which is basically molded around plastic, and then installed that mount. So that is on and off all the time. With the iPad mini, what I do is I just screw it in and I use that for Gaia's GPS. So just switching gears a little bit. The reason why I have an inReach mini is because I run all my mapping off of Gaia and my iPad mini does not have a um, G3, G4, G5 connection in it. So it's just a straight Wi-Fi. So the inReach mini provides me with a GPS signal to my iPad mini, and you do that through Bluetooth. So the Garmin I've had for a long period of time in some of the trails that I've done, there is no cell signal. So you need a signal to be able to continue your mapping. You can download the maps, but I just, it's bells and braces for me is the Garmin inReach Mini just sits up there. I'm on the 12 pound plan a month, I think. That provides me with a Bluetooth connection directly to my iPad Mini, and then I can run Gaia GPS off of those. I also have on the mount for my phone, I use Wikilocks. And I have started a video on where all this tech comes together to be able to provide that. And this thing seems to be messing about, but anyway, we move on. So. That's sort of the 67 designs, 300 millimeter rail on the front, a 100 millimeter rail on the side, and that gives me all of the tech that I need to go and do these types of trips. A few things that are coming up this week. So as I mentioned, the Navi Plus is going in. Hopefully they'll let me record it, and then I'll put that on sort of like a, a time lapse so you can see them tearing all this apart, as I mentioned before. I have some vinyl wrap going on the back windows. I'm not going to spoil what it is but the company that wrapped the Defender. And if you look closely at some of those videos, you see there is a bonnet wrap, just a small panel on the front, and there's a wrap around the sides. The company that did that in Farnborough, they've created some vinyl frost coverings for the rear windows, which I think look pretty cool, but we'll see what it looks like on the vehicle, and I'll give you an update there. The other thing is, this is gonna have to go in, um, one of the advisories when I took this in, when I first bought it, was the AC alternator belt needs to be changed. So it's got to go in and do that. And there's a few other little niggly things that I want them to do as well. The splash panel on the driver's side um, needs to be put back in. It, it's not in properly. You get some rubbing with the wheels, but that's a simple connectors, plug-ins, plastic uh, push fit connectors that are in there. A few other things. There's a really short video of me driving near French and Ponds on Christmas Eve. So I had about an hour to, to, to burn. I only had a GoPro with one of those bendy mounts that went on a tree. So the reason why you see me going backwards and forwards two or three times is purely that's the only mount I had. I had no other way of uh, securing the mount. So what I did was um, I took that for a drive, put it in extended mode, and then tried out the trail wasn't that difficult. A couple of people, as my subscribers, know where it is. It's not that difficult. This thing was, I lifted it up to the high level and then put it into, I think it was mud and ruts and then sand. And what was really interesting, what's fascinating to me is driving an analog vehicle like the Defender, 
there really is all of its driver input. There's no technical input whatsoever into that vehicle. This was fascinating to watch the locking center and rear differentials click in and out. Now, the first time I went through that water splash, nothing sort of kicked up. The third time I went through, if you notice, the right hand side of the vehicle dropped down. And I believe that there was a there's a dip there in that water splash and the water came up over the top of the bonnet. Not a lot. I think it was just the bow wave. But what was really interesting was both of the differentials locked on and you could see all the wizardry going on in the vehicle. It's a totally different experience driving this car when you're basically allowing the electronics to control what happens. I also played around with a hill descent system as well when it was in low range. So I did put it in low range just to test it out. And you can't push the low range or the hill descent system past sort of five or 10 mile an hour. If you try and put your foot on the accelerator, the ABS kicks in and slows it back down, which I thought was quite interesting. So it'll be good to see what it's like on different types of terrains, especially when I take it on sort of gravel roads, sand roads, and try it on some rocks when I plan to go to Spain. Hopefully in the next few weeks that we can escape, we're planning on escaping to go to Spain. And then I'm gonna have two or three days to be able to get from Santander to Valencia, where we hope to go, to sort of ride out a couple of months so I can work there and basically not be here. So it'll be interesting to see what happens and I want to do a comparison. So if you go back and look at some of the Defender videos that I created sort of into the desert, into the plains, into the mountains, all those ones that I put together, I'm going to do exactly the same routes in this that I did in the Defender as a comparison to see how this performs against what I know, how the Defender performs on those sort of trails. They're not that difficult. I would consider them to be easy to moderate but they'll definitely put this car through its paces. I'm sure it's never done anything like that before. There are a couple of rocky sections that I'm going to do, which will put this into rock crawl mode and then we'll see how that goes. But it'll be interesting as a comparison to see what it looks like as we go through those types of, uh, that types of terrain. So I hope that was of interest to you. Plenty more videos on their way. As you can appreciate this, I only do this for fun and part time, so it does take some time to edit it but you'll begin to see a lot more come. So I'm gonna try and start doing some more videos, probably one a week, try and do them on a Friday or a Saturday and publish them then, instead of doing this sort of drop kick of half a dozen all at once, which probably is overwhelming, but it's more of me just getting them out there. Um, and I'll probably start putting them on a schedule. But So I hope this was of interest to you. More videos coming this week. The Navi Plus, I hope to be able to get that edited by the end of the week and drop that as well. I'll walk you around the vinyl wraps. Hopefully they turn out as well as I expect them to. And plenty more videos on their way. So thanks very much for your time. Appreciate the subscription. Like, share, comment. If you have to do that, I don't, I see it, but everyone else doesn't. Go ahead and do it. But if you do leave a dislike, tell me. I'd love to know. I'd love to know why you don't like this content. Is it me? Is it the vehicle? Whatever it is, just tell me. Um, I'm a big boy doesn't really bother me, doesn't faze me that much. And with that, I wish you all a happy new year again. Safe travels, and I'll talk to you soon.